Here's a little aside about modular arithmetic and the Chinese remainder theorem for musicians. So this is about cross rhythms. Cross rhythms are when you have some rhythms that don't really exactly go with each other, but you have to try and play them at the same time. So for example, if you've got some quavers and you've got to play them at the same time as some semi-quavers, then it's perfectly easy because these are exactly half as long as those, so you know that this one goes at the same time as that one, and this one goes at the same time as that one. And essentially what you've done here is you've got you've got two things going against four things. So that's easy. But what if you're doing two things against three things? So you've still got just a pair of quavers here, but here you've got to play a triplet. In that case, if you've ever tried to do this, you might have just practiced doing the two against the three, and it kind of goes like this. So my left hand's going to do the two, and my right hand's going to do the three, and it goes listen to my right hand, it's going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you listen to my left hand, it's going one, two, one, two, one, two, in the same time that this is doing the three. So it's going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you might have learned how to do this by saying nice cup of nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea. So what's actually going on there? Well, it's the same as the Chinese remainder theorem, actually, because in order to work out how this rhythm really needs to go, you have to find the lowest common multiple of these two numbers in order to be able to divide it up exactly into two and to three. So you need the smallest number that's divisible by both two and three, which is, of course, six. So if we write down our 6, um, it's just like we did before. Uh, so let's see. So we're going to start with 0. 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So then your, your, um, your 2 is going to go on 0, and it's going to go on 3, right? Because those are the ones that are 0 mod 3. Now, if we take the ones that are 0 mod 2, we get this one this one, and this one. I wasn't supposed to put the six in because that's the same as a zero. So this is a kind of a whole bar, the whole beat. And then you can see that along the top here, this is where my, my two is going to go because I've divided it up into six. So if I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, except of course it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, I'd go zero, one, two, three, four, five, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then for the three, I'd go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then if I do both, I get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea. Right, so now if I try to do that for, if I try and do three against four, which is the next classic cross rhythm that you have to do, then, so the three against Four, as if you were doing a triplet against semi-quavers, triplet quavers against semi-quavers, you might have learned this one as well because it goes like this. Pass the rod down buzzer, pass the rod down buzzer, which is putting the emphasis on the three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Which you can also say as, I'm clever, you're a fool, which is how I learnt it. I'm clever, you're a fool, I'm clever, you're a fool. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So, how do we work this out? We take the highest common, the lowest common multiple of three and four, which is 12. So, we write out every number mod 12. Five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. Now we find everything that's 0 mod 3. Uh, two, four. Now 
and we find on the other side everything that's 0 mod 4. So now the bottom is going to give us our 3 and the top is going to give us our 4. So if we watch this very carefully and count, it goes on the, on the top, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And here we go, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So now if we put that together, we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Plus the goddamn butter. Plus the goddamn butter. Or we could say, we could emphasize the fours. So it would be 1, 2, oh, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, no, that's the same way as before. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm clever, you're a fool. I'm clever, you're a fool. So that's how you work out exactly how a 3 against 4 precisely has to go. So then, if you try to work out a 4 against 6, right? If you try to work out a 4 against 6, you wouldn't have to go all the way up to 24. It would be just like the example we did in the previous video for the Chinese remainder theorem when the highest common factor wasn't 1. Because if we did 4 against 6, the lowest common multiple is still only 12. So we can still use this diagram because 12 is divisible by 4. That gives us the top. And now we can take everything halfway in between our 3s as well, and that will give us the 6. So that tells us that to do a 4 against 6, precisely accurately. We only have to divide it into 12 and we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then you can speed that up if you really want to do. Of course, that's not really how musicians actually play cross rhythms, but if you wanted to work out exactly how it was supposed to go, this is what you would do. You'd find the lowest common multiple and then uh, you'd know that the pattern would repeat itself, would fit perfectly inside that number of subdivisions. So there we are.